Hello folks, it's me again, Amanda Enderman, your trusty tour guide in the wonders of the wonderful city, <clears throat> sorry, also known as Rio de Janeiro. So, uh, this is actually the first content video of our, of my, of my channel, uh, that is besides the introductory video. So if you're new to this channel, please watch the, introdu the introductory video. So that, um, which is entitled, uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, so that you'll have an idea of who I am, uh, what this channel is about and all of that. So our first, without further ado, uh, let's hop on to our virtual tour in our first video. So our first video is about none other than the foundation of Rio. Because of course, if you're gonna talk about any city, you're gonna have to talk about its foundation. So the foundation of Rio was, um, was but but first of all, but uh, second second thought, first of all, let's let's do this as if uh, we were picturing a real tour in our minds. Okay, which of course is what I would be doing. Otherwise, it would be just a regular channel talking about history, as there are so many on YouTube. But in this channel, we are doing actual tours only in our minds for now. Okay, so uh, if this were an actual tour, okay, I am a, I am a licensed tour guide after all. In the introdu in, in the introduction video, I talk about that. So uh, I would be taking you to this place over here okay there you go so uh this over here is the monument in honor which looks like a, like a pyramid by the way so this monument is in honor of Estacio de Sá none other than the founder of the city of Rio okay uh and as a matter of fact um, and, and this is located in the Fla in the Flamengo Park, okay, in the in the complex. So uh, it's actually it's actually very uh, accessible in terms of uh, in terms of visiting. So Estácio de Sá was none other than the founder of the city of Rio. Uh, and uh, I couldn't find a picture of a painting that is of him actually, because you see most of the paintings that are uh, that are available uh, are of his uncle Meng Jisa. Okay. Uh, however, I did find uh, another picture which will give you more or less an idea of who he was. Okay. So this is him. You see this guy in the in the um, uh, in the circle. So that is more or less who Estácio de Sá actually was. Okay. So uh, so actually he was the founder. But uh, let me do a quick parenthesis over here. So the foundation of the city of Rio, as I said, was uh, March first, fifteen sixty five. Okay, so Rio is uh, just this year in March, uh, of course, March 1st is the birthday of the city of Rio and is celebrated to this day. So Rio uh, is, uh, as of this year, 455 years old. Okay, and well, of course, uh, if you happen to be from a Latin American country or, or something like that, you may be wondering, uh, what, wait a minute, but, but why, why is Brazil, how come is Brazil so, uh, is Brazil, is Rio so old? Okay, uh, and I've had questions uh, from tourists uh, uh, asking precisely that. So the thing is, uh, the thing is that it has come to my, not to my, uh, to my awareness as a tour guide that uh, a lot of countries, especially countries which used to be former colonies in Latin America, uh, they count their age from their independence, which the independence of most countries in Latin America, if not all of them, was in the it was somewhere in the 1800s, including Brazil. And I will get to that in in future videos. So hold on to your hats. Okay, already. Uh, already uh, uh, previewing future topics. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, so, uh, so, but in Brazil, 
okay? We count our age as a country and also, in the case of Rio, the age of the city of Rio and also every other city in Brazil goes by that same system. We count from the foundation of the city or, in the case of Brazil, from the discovery. So, uh, the discovery of Brazil... Uh, that, that's a question I know everybody wants to know. So the discovery of Brazil was in April 21st, uh, was in April 21st, 1500. And a lot of sources, a lot of books, especially those who are written after the year 2000, they say it was April 22nd, but actually up until that date, the presumed date was April 21st. Uh, mainly because, well, Brazil was discovered uh, during the night. The sun hadn't risen yet when, when land was first seen. So, uh, and yes, they, uh, the settlers arrived in, in Brazil already. Uh, the sun was high up uh, in the sky. But uh, the discovery of a country, what counts as the discovery of a country is finding land is you're at sea, you don't know where that country is, and you find land over there, and oh, it's over there. That is a discovery. So that was done before the sun rose. So to all effects and purposes, uh, it was the 21st, at least by the knowledge of the time. Because, of course, before we had uh, our, our handy-dandy uh, digital clocks, digital watches, and, and all this technology, the day only began when the sun rose and ended when the sun would set. Okay? Uh, so, uh, that, at least that's, that's what people thought. <laughs> so, anyways... Uh, and, and also, that brings me to another topic uh, for, for future videos. Stay tuned. I'm not going to tell you what that one is, just keeping the, the mystery so that you're curious. <laughs> so, anyways, so coming back to uh, Estácio de Sá, so he founded the city of Rio in uh, March 1st, 1565. But Rio was actually discovered uh, a, li a while before that. Rio was discovered in um, uh, Rio was discovered in January first, fifteen o two. January first, January second. Sorry, fifteen o two. Okay, uh, and even the name Rio. This is another question that everyone asks me. So the name Rio means river. And Janeiro, it means, is the name of the month of January. Because, you see, the explorers, they mistakenly thought that the Guanabara Bay, which actually you can see in the picture, the, the body of water, which was behind the, the, the monument, is actually the, the, the Guanabara Bay, at least a part of it. So they thought that the Guanabara Bay was the delta of a huge river. And they found it in January, so the January River. This is what the, literally, this is what the name of the city of Rio translates to. Very creative, I know. <laughs> so, but back to Estácio de Sá. So, he founded the city of Rio. Uh, he didn't found the city of Rio on the, pl on the site of that monument, no. Even though that monument is in honor of him, the actual site of the foundation of the city of Rio is at the Urca Fort, which is in Urca, uh, where the sugar loaf is, that is right on the other side of the bay, because I know that you noticed, I'm sure that you noticed that also behind the monument was none other than the sugar loaf. Okay, so uh, the, the actual site of the foundation of the city of Rio, where he planted the flag, you know, and dun -dun -dun, this is going to be the city of Rio, is in Urca, inside the Urca fort. So it's actually a military area. But it's also, yeah, but it's not uh, hard to visit, you know, uh, actually you just, you just go there and you're guided by the, the soldiers of the, of the fort, okay? Uh, that's basically uh, the only uh, difference to a regular uh, tourist attraction, which in a sense, it, it, well, as a, to all intents and purposes, it is a tourist attraction. So, anyways, uh, but, uh, so... Going back to Estácio de Sá, once again, so 
uh, as I've been saying, uh, <laughs> and of course I believe in the power of repetition, so one thing is for sure of this video, you'll memorize the date of the foundation of the city of Rio, which was? Can anyone tell me by now? No? Okay, no problem. I'll repeat it again. So it was March 1st, 1565. So on this day, Estácio de Sá was at where now is the Urca Fort, and he planted the flag, and he said, this will be the city of Rio. But if you think for one minute that it was a smooth uh, and easy foundation, think again. Okay, because actually Estácio de Sá had a lot on his plate. And uh, the main thing that he had on his plate were French pirates. Okay, so how did, so wait a minute, and, and you may be thinking about, wait a minute, Amanda. So uh, is it, Brazil, you, may be, you may be wondering, isn't Brazil a Portuguese colony? So how, where did the French come in? Was Brazil a French colony after all? If so, then how come in Brazil they don't speak French? The, the, you speak uh, uh, Portuguese, okay? So how, how come, okay? So the thing is that, so in order to explain that, let's rewind, okay, a few decades before 1500, okay? Uh, I, I would say one decade, not even two decades. So, uh, around this time, okay, uh, a treaty was signed between uh, Portugal and Spain, okay, presided by uh, the Pope at the time, which was none other than Alexander Sixtus, okay, yes, the Borgia Pope, okay, <laughs> yes, it was him. So, he, signed, he presided over the signing of this treaty, which was called the Treaty of Tordesilhas, okay? So this treaty uh, basically divided uh, the world between Portugal and Spain, okay? Uh, so the thing is that, uh, the thing is that, of course, the French king at the time was not pleased at all with this, naturally. In fact, he famously said, uh, I would, um, and I think it, and I, I'm not sure about this, folks. Correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, please. But I believe his name was was Henry the Second, if I'm not mistaken. So the, the the French, but right now his name escapes me. So the the French king at the time, uh, he famously said, "I would like to see the clause in the in the in the in the in Adam's will. Yes, Adam, the very first uh, man created by God and such." So I would like to see the clause in the in, in Adam's will that excluded me from the division of the world. Okay, so he was pretty pissed off, to be to to put it bluntly. So uh, what he did was he tried to take uh, the coast of Brazil of the of South America that is by force. Okay, and how did he do that? Well, two fronts. The first he backed. French pirates, okay, to take over the city of Rio, at least the shore, at least, at least the shore of the city of Rio. And also, uh, there were, uh, at this time, also, the Protestant Reformation was in full force in England, so in England, uh, in, also in England, but uh, all, all over Europe. So, because, uh, because uh, a monk called Martin Luther had decided to, uh, to um, nail uh, his thesis to the, the, the doors of a church in Germany. So, uh, even more, so also in England, you know, the whole, the, the, uh, the foundation of, of, the England, of the Anglican Church with Henry VIII and all of that. So, uh, so what happened was that um, in France, there were a lot of uh, Protestants of several uh, of several divisions of, of the Protestant Church who were there escaping persecution, and even in France the persecution was starting to grow. So mainly the, in France, in particular, the Calvinists were very much a target of persecution. So the King of France literally wanted to get to get them out of his hair. Okay, so he thought. 
what better solution than to send these Calvinists to a new France, as, he, as they coined it, the Antarctic France, okay? And in fact, such a place existed. And the very site of the Antarctic France, okay, as they called it, exists to this day, okay, uh, and which is which is the island of Villegagnon. So this is it, my friends. Nowadays, as you can see, it is also the site of the naval school. So this over here is where our naval offices get trained. Okay, so this, so this uh, over here is where our naval offices get trained and become uh, lieutenants and so on. Okay, but they graduate the, the, the naval school with the, with, the, with the rank of lieutenant. So, uh, and the reason why it's called Villegagnon, it is in honor of the man who actually founded the Antarctic France. Okay, so, uh, so before founding the city of Rio and claiming it as, no, this belongs to Portugal, basically, okay, Estácio de Sá had the, 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 the lovely task of, ex of kicking the French out, okay, so keep this in mind because as you will see through the, through the centuries, our attitude towards the French has changed a lot to put it mildly. But basically, in the beginning of the city of Rio, our attitude towards the French was out of here. Okay? So, so in 1560, uh, so, uh, so a lot of wars took place between the Portuguese and the French until finally in 1567, yes, two years after Rio was, was officially founded, only then did Estácio de Sá manage to kick, to actually kick the French out, okay? Uh, so, and dismantle the Antarctic France and of course arrest all the French, the French uh, who, who were there and stuff, and all of that, uh, and all of that, uh, all of that shaman. So, and uh, the actual battle, okay, the, 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 the decisive battle between the Portuguese and the, and the French, which uh, once and for all expelled the French, took place at a site which is in Gloria, Okay, in the neighborhood of Gloria in Rio, which nowadays, where nowadays there stands a church called the Outeiro da Gloria. Okay, but in fact, originally, this was the site of a fort, okay, which was the fort of Urusumirim. And the decisive battle was called the Battle of Urusumirim. Okay, so that was the battle in 1567, which expelled the French. Though Estácio de Sá ended up paying the ultimate price in this battle because he was shot. Uh, it, uh, it is said that he, would sh that he was shot in the eye or near the eye or in the face. You know, uh, a lot of sources vary uh, in, the, in that sense. But he was shot by an arrow, a poisoned arrow. And the, he managed to survive, uh, but the wound got infected and he died from the infection, okay? Uh, and he died from this infection, okay? Uh, so, uh, so uh, anyways, uh, so... That was basically the, the story of the actual uh, foundation of Rio. And uh, then again, you and of course, you may be wondering, and uh, it's amazing how, how big is the interest about the tourist, uh, uh, I mean, of the tourists about this topic, okay? Which is, but Amanda, where do the natives come in? You, you've talked about the French, you've talked about the Portuguese, but of course, Rio had natives before, before any of them came, right? So, 
where do the natives come in? Did they just sit by and and did 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 they just stand back and uh, watch? You know, while all of this uh, was happening. Well, of course not. And here, let allow me to deconstruct one of the main myths that has pervaded um, uh, history and the way history is told. Uh, and, and I see it a lot in tourists, okay? This myth is that the, the indigenous were just innocent, you know, they didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't have any malice, they didn't, uh, poor things, they, they, they were nothing but victims in the whole thing, and such, and, and let me tell you, they, they suffered a lot. Of course, they had quite a few, uh, uh difficulties, uh, themselves. There were a lot of wars, of course, as well, uh, in the beginnings, uh, of Brazil between the the Portuguese and the indigenous as well. Make no mistake about it. Okay, but uh, but of course they were one. But of course, number one, they were not wars in which the Portuguese had all the advantage and the indigenous didn't. No, the f to begin with, the indigenous far outnumbered the the Europeans at least in the beginning. Okay. And, uh, and also, they had the, the, the supreme advantage of knowing the terrain. They knew the land, okay, which the Portuguese didn't. So that gave the indigenous a significant advantage. So, so then, Amanda, how come it was so easy, quotations, okay, how come it, several quotations here, so how come it was so easy for the Portuguese to conquer, and, and the French as well, to conquer uh, Brazil? The thing is that uh, several indigenous tribes actually aligned themselves with the explorers, okay? They joined forces with the explorers. Okay, and they actually traded with the explorers as well. Okay, because it was also in their interest to trade. For instance, in fact, the very name Brazil comes from none other than Brazil wood, which was our very first export to Portugal as a colony. So the indigenous they exchanged Brazil wood for uh, metal axes that the Portuguese had for weapons, uh, firearms, basically, that the, that, uh, that the Portuguese had also, and several other things, okay? And specifically, in the, 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 the wars between the Portuguese and the French, there were actually two main tribes that also took part in these wars. So, the Tupinambá, okay, uh, they sided with the French, okay? Whereas the Temiminois, which were which was a tribe uh, from Niteroi, actually, which is another city in the state of Rio, also on the other side uh, of the bay, basically it's a neighboring city uh, to Rio. So the Temiminois sided with the Portuguese, and actually the chief of the Temiminois, okay, which to this day his statue stands at the entrance to at, at the at the ferry boat station in Niteroi. His statue stands like uh, like this, you know, all serious and solemn. Okay, was called the Arariboya, and he actually converted to Christianity. He was actually converted to Christianity. Uh, and so he sided, he and the Temiminois sided with the Portuguese. So make no mistake about it, the indigenous were not just uh, sitting idly by as, the, as those white folks uh, fought, over, uh, fought over the land. They were, also in, they were also very much in on it. Okay, so folks, this concludes uh, our very first episode of... Oh no, wait a minute, this doesn't conclude. Sorry, <laughs> gotcha, made you look so... Uh, gotcha. <laughs> Let's just put it. I, I forgot something. So, uh, in the, the the monument, going back to the monument, okay. Another thing that you would see at the monument, okay, would be uh, three flags, okay, as I will show you in this picture over here. So this over here, 
okay? This is what you would see at the front of the monument, a little before it, okay? So, uh, and you may be wondering, what are those three flags? Well, the middle flag, okay, uh, so the middle flag, I'm sure you're all very familiar with this one, it is none other than the flag of Brazil, okay? Uh, and I will, of course, and I will also do a video speaking about the several different flags of Brazil because I know that this is a this is a topic that uh, interests also interests tourists a lot. Okay, uh, stay tuned for that. So the other two flags. So the flag on the so let me let me just let me just see here. So the flag on the left side of the flag of Brazil is the flag of the state of Rio. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, oh, but <laughs> it was asking them. So is this flag over here? Okay, so this folks is the flag of the state of Rio. Okay. Uh, and yes, Brazil also has states, just as the United States, okay? We have, as a matter of fact, 26 states in Brazil, okay? And so, the capital of, uh, and so, the state of Rio has a lot of different cities. Uh, among a few examples, of course, I can, I can name uh, Petrópolis, uh, Teresópolis, Niterói, which I just mentioned, uh, Búzios, um, uh, uh, also um, uh, Paraty, okay? All of these are cities in the state of Rio. And so the city of Rio is actually the capital of the state of Rio, okay? Uh, so the flag of the city of Rio which is on the right side of the flag in the monuments that I, that, I showed, that I showed you in the picture, is this one over here. So this, folks, is the flag of the city of Rio, okay? Uh, and as a matter of fact, one thing that, uh, that, may, that perhaps you didn't notice in the flag of the state of Rio, which is this over here, which is this over here, uh, is the mountains uh, in the in the in the back? This mountain that looks like a finger pointed to to the sky. This is actually if you go to Teresópolis, okay, you will see that the it, it's it literally looks like a finger doing this. Not 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 uh, uh, not this finger over here. This finger, okay, <laughs> very important. Not this not this finger. This one. <laughs> So, uh, this is called the finger of God, literally. This is a literal translation. This, uh, this mountain is called this. So, it's another thing for you to, for you to keep in mind when you're, when, you, when you're able to come here, okay? So, and now, yes, now, uh, uh, as we say in Portuguese, agora para valer. So, uh, so meaning, meaning now it's for real. So, this is... The, this concludes our first episode of the foundation of the city of Rio. So stay tuned for more episodes and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!